Hi there, fellow art nerds, and welcome to episode number six of The Pin Click. And this is our monthly online art show brought to you by VisionCon, Clever Kaiju, and Playco Games. I'm your host, Deanna. Um, I am a volunteer staff member for VisionCon, and I'm co-owner of Playco Games. And I am co-hosting tonight with Mr. Gary Bedell from Clever Kaiju. Hello, everyone. Let me see. All right, this month we have got nine gorgeous pieces of art. Eight artists drew them. And one special guest artist who we haven't seen in a while. We're very happy to have him back. So I'm going to go around and um, call everyone out. Then we will get to the art. I should know this by now. This is episode number six. I'm still <laughs> my doubts and confused. All right. It is guys. okay. It, it has been a long <laughs> week for everyone. It is all right. Yeah. <laughs> we all just survived 2020. <laughs> so it's okay to mess up one. Did we, Gary? Are you sure? <laughs> yes. Wait, did you say only mess up once? <laughs> Well, Good. first of all, tonight you've met Gary. I've introduced myself. We've also got Miss Haley Codling. Hello. We have got Nate Howard, who is muted. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Daryl Clodge. Eric E. Danger Wright. Hey, guys. <laughs> and James Rutherford. Caitlin Blaine. Hello. Brand new to the pin click tonight, we have Chet Smith. New blood. Oh, hi. Alec, I'll take swords for 400. <laughs> <laughs> and then joining us once again, Mr. David Fott, who's been gone for a couple of months. And we are thrilled to have him back tonight. Hey, guys. It's good to be back. Good to see you again. Yeah. Now, David did not draw tonight. He's just here for commentary. But he's better oh, be Lord, nice. no, I'm just here to say hey. You better be nice because you're drawing next month, correct? Yes, <laughs> I will be back next month in full glory, I guess you'd say. Is that the word? I don't know. But yeah, I'll have art next month. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, well, let me see. For anybody that's new, here's how the pin click works. The beginning of the month, we ask for suggestions on a topic. The second week, we vote on the suggestions, and the top suggestion is what becomes our topic for the month. This month was Baby Makes Three. We wanted um, a character that, that our artists were going to draw the children of the character of the chosen, plus multiple other characters of their choice. Each one picked one. They didn't draw a bunch. <laughs> we're supposed to draw a bunch of art. Sorry. Hope I didn't scare anybody. <laughs> so Swamp Thing was the one that won. We had Otachi, I think, Betty Boop. Um, do you remember who else? I think one was Betty White, but nobody did Betty White. So. <laughs> no, we didn't do that one. Shame. I thought very heavily about it. But I thought Gary was going to do it for sure, so I didn't touch it. Oh, here we go. I, got, I have two monitors, and I have to hide it, or else I can see both feeds. <laughs> we just had six from Legend, Mr. Mitzelplik, is that how you say it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, Firestorm, Swamp Thing, Otachi from Pacific Rim, and Betty Boop. And Swamp Thing was a big winner. He got to date 10 different <laughs> people, and tonight we are going to see the children of that matchup. We're going to see everyone that Swamp Thing swiped right on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The result of, yeah. I, his finger kept slipping. He's just covered. <laughs> it was Valentine's Day last year, and this is what happened. <laughs> so, um, without further ado, I believe, James, we're going to start with you tonight. All right. Oh, would you like to, you can and tell us a little bit about yourself, if you'd like, what you're up to, and... Uh, been working too much. I pulled a couple of 24 hours, so, <laughs> uh, cool. yeah, it sucks when you do that, but, uh, anyhow, uh, I did change my, uh, Instagram. It's now Jay Rutherford art. 
than Instagram. It's no longer the funny Japanese name that no one can spell or say. Mm -hmm. I figured it was a little bit easier to remember. So I you just said that because I was about to share your links. Yeah. <laughs> so it's now uh, uh, J Rutherford Art. J uh, Rutherford Art. Okay. Yeah. So I apologize for not sending that forward. Good call, because the rest of us, we don't know what we're doing. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Oh. oh. So I had uh, the cheetah from Wonder Woman. Uh, with oh. Swamp Thing. Oh. Oh, sweet, dude. I am not. Dude. I love that pose. Yeah. Good pose. Man, those lips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? So uh, I just kind of started taking features. You know, Swamp Thing's got all the bushes and tree limbs and stuff. I kind of did the cheetah mouth with the Swamp Thing mouth on there at the same time. <laughs> and the brow, too. I like that. That you kind of gave, gave her, like, the... I understand. Kind of the brow, there. That's, that's nice. Yeah. That is cool. I like the uh, the bark pauldron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Words. Huh. I'm just thinking this would make great camouflage. Yeah, I mean it's perfect. It's a net. It's like you know, if she wasn't already an incredible hunter to begin with, you know. So yeah, I mean it's a little busy because there's not much color there, but you know, it's if we had if I had a little more time, I'd do some coloring on it. Uh, You're not lost in it though, like no. Not no. Well, right in this area, we start to get you know, you got the hand, the foot, the leg. It all mm -hmm. starts to kind of blend in together with the line art, but good hands, good feet. Yeah. Excellent. I love her shoulders. I, I didn't see that till you zoomed in. Oh, with the, the, the kind of the wooden. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, so I want to kind of have like, she's still got the fur, but the wood starts coming through the mm -hmm. vines uh, on her hip, too. Got the vines on the legs. I feel like texture is pretty hard without color, but you did a real good job of yeah. everything really. Oh. Like, most yeah. of it's just implied for, for with line. Yeah, your line works beautiful. Very plain. Uh, oh, like you captured the uh, like you've got her face like a humanoid face like a, a female face right. But I like the uh, the extra that you put in her brow, which is a very strong Swamp Thing characteristic. Yeah, yeah. I said and that. I don't yeah. know if that was just because of the markings of her face, but like the way his his face kind of goes flush, like goes flat, and then you, you, these really like dynamic lines. From the edge of his nose down, or like you still kind of captured that flushed look of his face and that heavy brow. Yeah, it was real tempting because you know he's got that very distinctive from the nose point, right. that, that brow point that comes down. It's almost like a hood on top of the nose. Right. It's like a. And I didn't want to do that because there, you know, it could get lost in like her markings, which I didn't do the traditional markings that you would put on her, you know, down right. the sides and darken the eyes. But I did give her that that kind of brow up top. I can't imagine anything mixed with Swamp Thing is gonna be terribly beautiful. So it all <laughs> right. I, I like that you did that pose too, because that's not an easy pose to do. Right. And, and, you know, like that's I, I love that you went for a pose like that. So that's just great. And of course the line works amazing. And, and you use the pencil brush, correct? That. Yeah, this is that that pencil brush. Uh, Great brush strokes, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so much easier to ink digitally. <laughs> if I had to do this by hand, I'd have ink smears everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the patience for traditional. Just keep a fan going the whole time? I, I want it to dry quicker, and I've tried it, and it's like, oh, look, that's dry smear, son of a... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. So there's my blending. Uh, Feels really dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> what, what um did you have any other uh, ideas and concepts for this before you chose this one, and what? Why did you choose the design you have now? If you did. Um, choose the character or the way that I went about it. Both. Both. <laughs> Uh, I just watched Wonder Woman 1984, so that was an influence there when I saw her on the list. I was like, okay, that'll be fine. Um, <laughs> that'll do. Yeah, that, <laughs> there we go. Uh, but I didn't want to take away 
I, you know, you look at a lot of Swamp Thing images, and he's coated. He's just dripping in uh, the the leaves and the foliage and the and the bark and stuff. Right. And I didn't want to go to the point where you would lose the feminine features completely in that. Plus, you think as a cheetah, you don't want to lose that that make it too cumbersome. Right. So I figured, um, well, maybe we can blend it in, like in the arms. <laughs> You know, we could take some of that, you know, it blends in. So now it's not just there. It's actually, you know, armor almost um, with her for protection against, you know, whatever. And it's kind of like, I was thinking too, it's like if she's out in the in the woods, you know, cheetah, the spots are meant for camouflage. So I figured her, uh, the Swamp Thing deck elements too should be able to go into camouflage as well. It's brave of you to put mushrooms on her. I wouldn't imagine that, you know, most people, let alone, you know, would like mushrooms grow on them like that. <laughs> if I were her, I'd be like, nope. <laughs> mm -hmm. I also hate mushrooms, though. Three yeah. fast-growing mushrooms are very slow cheetah. <laughs> like <a> <laughs> yeah, she's got two mushrooms. I was like, eh. You know, I was thinking of something else other than just leaves to add. Nice touch. Yeah. Yeah, this is really, really good, man. I'm glad that you decided to show this, man. Like, yeah. I want to talk about it. Yeah, this is great. And of course, I, I love your the way you use your line weight, too. Really, really cool stuff, man. Like, you you get how it works. I mean, I tell you that all the time. But <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's really great stuff. It's a weapon of choice. Yeah. Brush strokes are awesome. Always on point. Yeah. yeah. Whenever you were working on this, did you have all the pins from uh, the puns from Batman and Robin going through your head? All the, the ones, that, one liners they gave to Poison Ivy. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't even think about that. No. Uh, whenever I, oh, I no. saw you, that you chose it in an email, I, the first thing that came to mind was great set of stems. <laughs> no, I oh, haven't. None of those. <laughs> I haven't seen those movies in a while, so they're not that fresh in my brain to, to actually pull some of it. Uh, oh, I have to. All I can think of are all the bad Mr. Freeze jokes. Oh, yeah. Did you, did, so, you enjoy, did you enjoy the new Wonder Woman movie? I was a little disappointed in it. Um, the story I overall. I talk about the new Wonder Woman movie. I was very hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the overall story was poor, poor. Uh, you know, everything else was nice and cool, social effects, everything, but I think the overall story was lacking. Did it bother anyone else that she and Steve Trevor were pretty much gang raping that strange guy? Yeah. No. Like, he I, just, like, this <laughs> Dude, I, I don't even want to know. I haven't even seen the movie. I don't, I don't even want to know. So, uh, spoiler, yeah. There's a lot of I'm not worried about spoilers. I've had my time. No, no, you can spoil the hell out of it. Yeah. I just, I'm just like, <laughs> okay, well, it's not the way I made it sound. I no, was, I, I was kind of. It was kind of. No one watching may not have seen it, so I don't want to go too much into it, you know. <laughs> Good point. But if anybody, the one thing that made me happy, stay till the after credit. Yes. When it was yeah. over? I teared up, man. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited. That do you guys, <laughs> do you want me to jump into Anna's while I'm still displaying, or do you want to come back to her? Yeah, let's go ahead and do Anna's. Yeah. Anna, Anna Rutherford couldn't join us tonight, but James is presenting her gorgeous art that she shared. Okay, so this is Anna's. <gasps> I'm sorry. Oh. Can you do it in her voice? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can try, but uh, I can't adjust the pitch, or I'll just lose my voice. So she did give me a little, a little note card, um, and I'll just go over. No way. So this is the love child of Swamp Thing and Sailor Jupiter, uh, and Anna loves to draw the Sailor Scout. She's, you know, really likes the stories and everything, and so she had her concept art. Um, she wanted to pull from the original early oh, wow. concept art um, yeah, for her character design. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. So those poor legs. 
<laughs> and this artist, I mean, she really draws some super long legs on all of her characters. Yeah. You can tell she has a background in fashion or is like interested in fashion because yeah. when people do their fashion design, they usually draw super long limbs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So she says her version of Swamp Thing that she used was the animated version. Uh, so she was going off that animated, uh, the Warner Brothers style, very simplistic line, animated version. Uh, and the vines all over her uh, body, the design, the gloves, and the boots are all based on Swamp Thing, mm -hmm. uh, along with the collar up here. And uh, her sailor suit, she used the earlier concepts from Sailor Jupiter, which I just showed. Uh, and she didn't give her the, the goggles because it gave her this, because uh, uh, he gave her the uh, leaf-like eyelashes. Let me zoom in on those. So they're more like the leaves for the eyelashes. Oh, okay. Oh, I get it. that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anna always does a good job at making me like interested in a character. Like she yeah. always puts character. In. <laughs> so she didn't want to use the goggles because she's worried that it would take away from the actual leaf effect that she was going for. Yeah. And uh, did she not have time to color? Uh. No, uh, she, she's got school and work and Jane. a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. I really uh, like the color work, but I yeah, mean, you know, well, she likes using process. her pen, so it takes her a little bit longer than it does us when we're doing digital work, right? So she draws it, scans it, inks it, uh, and then goes in with the, the Copics and then does her touch ups. And the Copics take a while because you got to wait for them to dry. And yeah, that's a long process. Yeah. No, I we completely understand. I just know yeah. that with her color style in the past, like it, I bet this yeah. would be really cool. She says that she really enjoys creating uh, the Sailor Moon characters. And this is one that she will finish at a later date. So it will be colored at some point. Very cool. You and know, then, I think we're going to have to do an episode next year. Where you guys bring back all the stuff you keep saying, I want to keep working on this. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could be a reboot, like the ep like the first episode could be like a recap and we can show what we've done. That would be uh, pretty cool. Oh, geez. Hey, let, if you're out there watching, let us know what you think in the comments about that. Or what, or what would you like to see for season two? Yeah. yeah. Um, so just to give Anna a quick plug, since she's not, not here, she's got her DeviantArt page, uh, her Tumblr. And her Pinterest. And James, how do you pronounce that? I think it's I I Ru I, I. I'm probably <laughs> butchering it. It's, I think it's Aoi Ryu. Yeah, something like that. She said with the very first episode, she sent me the pronunciation, and I haven't said it since then, so I don't remember exactly. I'll just get really close for those that are interested. They can really get in on there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and anybody watching this on Facebook, um, the links are all in the chat. So if you look it up on Facebook, you can link directly over to her. And I, I will say on YouTube, the links will be below. So <laughs> I will say this too, uh, you know, working traditionally is it's not easy. You know, <laughs> like even though yes, we do kind of have shortcuts with digital, like you know, working traditionally like this and then going through the process of the coloring and stuff, I mean, that's a lot of labor. So even just drawing this and doing, doing this traditionally, I, I really, really dig it, man. So she <laughs> used the new Adobe Scan It art for the cell phone on this one, and I was shocked. Really? Yeah, I, I didn't realize it was there, but yeah, it's like a, it scans it using it and does like some corrections so that the line art and everything gets changed. So oh, that's I haven't. Cool. I haven't bumped it. I didn't even know the app existed till she showed it to me. What's huh. the app? The Adobe Scan. Adobe Scan. Scan. Yeah. Wow. Unscribble that down. Yeah, no. <laughs> Everyone's like, ooh. ooh. <laughs> but that's what she used, and I think it came out great. Yeah, it looks awesome. You know, I mean, this would be ready if it was me. I'd just switch it to black and white mode, uh, readjust, and start coloring. Yep. Yeah. So I think it did a really good job, and you don't get a lot of those you know, when you do a traditional scan, if you zoom in, uh, you get a lot of that uh, rainbow colored uh, yeah. dithering yes. along the edges. Excellent. And I'm not really seeing that. 
So. Yeah, that's fun. Woohoo! <laughs> Good job, Anna. You look <laughs> sexy when you go up and down her. <laughs> 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 all right well i'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and then uh you guys have questions or whatnot i'll try to answer them as best i can for her. yeah i see there's a few of you watching live please comment ask questions just say hey like earlier stephanie Beatty said hi so hi related stephanie huh. and mm -hmm. Haley codling said codling said hello <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to be polite okay, the who's, who's next Eric, would you like to go next? I will go next. I don't know why I asked. <laughs> He's like, I guess. <laughs> I will go next. <laughs> <laughs> Behold. Last month you had Beast Boy, didn't you? I had the best team Titan, Beast Boy. Hi. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Let <laughs> me so, uh, pick him just because he's the best team Titan. Yeah, oh, hey, sure. yeah. I, I, Kyle, Kyle Smith, Krista Purrier, and David Stanfield say hi, everyone. Let's say hi to those guys. What's up, guys? Hi, guys. Thank you for being here. And hi, Kimberly. Hello, Kimberly. I like it when you guys speak up. <laughs> we still love. <laughs> Not just the void we're talking to anymore. <laughs> And there we go. Eric on the computer. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. You chose Beast Boy just so you could choose any animal you wanted. Yeah. I, yeah, I would not have gathered this with Beast Boy. At least no. I colored it. Dude, I don't even care. Still. It doesn't Fine. matter. Yeah. <laughs> so you, Swamp Thing and the T Rex of Jurassic Park got it on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I like the little rare. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god. That's that crazy is... line work, man. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's that nice. Tail. Yeah. I want to see that tail closer. Yeah, I like how it kind of unspools near the end. <laughs> leg. Looks the, like the squirrel. Did you oh, see the yeah. squirrel? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. There's a turtle in there too. Turtle. Oh, this is turtle. All through this. There we go. The it level of turtle. detail. Yeah, on his yeah. collar. You're right. He looks so happy. <laughs> <laughs> a little squirrel mixed in there. Oh. And a frog. There's a bullfrog. Is that a frog? Oh, that yeah, there's a frog up there. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. This is cool. So, I love the tail. Yeah. Thank you. I want to see him now. Make it in it. Well, at least now he has longer hands so he can reach out. To exactly. Well, that's pretty cool. The tail <laughs> isn't actually solid. It's actually, it unravels towards the tip. There's nothing yeah. Else. That is a cool. That's hey, awesome. What, what was your, uh, what was your thought process with like the design of this here? I'm trying to think, figure out where, you, what you guys are thinking or what your creative process is like. So the first idea, I, I kind of wanted to just do the most exciting version of Beast Boy. So I chose the T-Rex, like, you know, this is the moment where he's going to kick that bad guy's ass. And, <laughs> and, uh, you know, my like win button, though, really. Let's... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so my next thought was, like, I wanted to make this thing look like it emerged out of the swamp like two seconds ago. So I decided I would create this little ecosystem on its back that... <laughs> And, awesome. uh, and uh, let's see. So I was actually hoping that I was going to be able to finish the colors today, but I had to leave town for a minute. But uh, it's sitting on my drafting table, just uh, waiting for some finishing touches. <laughs> You've got to promise to show us what it looks like once. Yeah. You yeah. Well, I, I think print you have to color it. Sure. If you're on the Instagram, uh, you'll probably see it this weekend. <laughs> yeah. I that bark texture coming up. Yeah. His thought. I keep going. Yeah, that's so cool. I really okay. like the, the the rectangle base because it it makes it feel more like 
or like a graphic element it gives it some weight but it also makes it feel like this is just a splash page mm -hmm. out of a whole issue yeah. makes him so much bigger though too like oh right. yeah this whole background yeah there's an entire swamp behind him but look at that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm oh, always blown oh, away by your draftsmanship. Like your pencil works incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have like to go back to again. I, I need to put some work into it. Do you use like <laughs> like uh, blue pencils, or do you just use mechanical, or what do you what do you use? Yeah, uh, this one was all with the uh, 0.3 pencil. I usually like to use some blue pencil beforehand, but I was drawn on my watercolor paper and like mm. really waxy and doesn't want to take the uh take the watercolor i'm so heavy-handed when i draw to just traditionally <laughs> so i just smear like this whole thing if this is me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like how much do you do of like a skeleton or planning out or is it just like detail printer like left to right detail printer <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, my whole thing, like, I was I was trained for, like, classical style drawing, so I break everything down into tiny little pieces. I, yeah. I really studied a, uh, a T-Rex skeleton and then uh, T-Rex skin on top of that and then followed that up by uh, some Swamp Thing studies. It was cool. <laughs> Did you have a certain comic artist that you were aiming for a similar style, or is this just all you? I think uh, um, Jesus Saiz, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but his Swamp Thing looked super dope, and I was like, I need to make that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. David Stanfield, oh wow, that is awesome. Yeah, pretty much just repeating in chat what we've been, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, 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 it. Well, I, I like that you, I always notice that you add um, design elements with it, within your R2, like the, the uh, box, the, the environment behind it, and then like the raw, you know, with the, the first and, you know, the, the caption there. And I just like that. Like, I see that sometimes in your work, and I really think it's neat that you do a lot, add a lot of design yeah. and stuff with the art thank you this i think would make a great 3d model printed yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that would be fun like one of those uh james groman uh sculptures that he does like the the corpse kong and stuff like oh that. oh yeah 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 i definitely get like a yeah it, You've got like a broken, like I said, his right leg looks like it was made from a, a pirate ship, but it also kind of resembles like his muscular structure just made out of planks of wood. Like without it being in color, like you could go, you could make this like gory if you wanted to. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of it looks like it's actually him. Other parts of it seems like it's like mounted or like fused into his body. It's. Um, what he's trying to say is that your designs are gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, <joking>. wow. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted. That's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely a lot of TLC put into that, man. This is just yeah. Awesome. And I gotta see this colored, man. I gotta see this in color. Did you get uh, anything I else done this week? Uh, no, actually, I didn't. <laughs> 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 no, no, I haven't even fed the dog. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> That's why I don't have a dog, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm the least responsible person, is all I'm saying. <laughs> I think uh, that's all I got. Yeah, that's wild, dude. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Now, I'm curious, did you guys all go with the first character you decided on, or did you have to think about a few before you settled on one? I had to think about a few. Yeah. I, I thought of a few. Oh, what the choices you, were great. What yeah. are some you didn't, didn't pick? I'm curious. I didn't choose any of them. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, went and grabbed my own because I was just excited. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, but I had a few ideas. But yeah. I, I thought about venom would be kind of cool just because, Ooh. like, the thought of like seed spores going off like oh. lines to create more symbiotes would be pretty awesome. I was this close to Betty. I was this close to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> get the entire Golden Girls in by, by season two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the goal. Oh, God. Just be honest. Just draw Golden Girls and we'll move on with our lives. <laughs> I'm not if you just want everyone to draw Golden Girls. For this. Right. Tomorrow, next month, <laughs> Golden Girls. Gary, I'm <laughs> sure we could come up with some kind of prompts. That oh, I know. That. Oh, I know. <laughs> you heard uh, it here stay tonight. Stay tuned. You heard it here tonight. <laughs> it's coming. And Golden Girls were a, a superhero you. team. <laughs> Basically, just them at their table. Golden Girls like, trying to adjust the sleep. Yeah. It, should, it should totally be like each of us do the Golden Girls, but like one person does it like in an anime style, one does it like a gritty detective style. Yeah. Um, like a so so Cal art style type deal. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yes, because in season two, you're all going to have to draw at least ten characters in every dry. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> every oh, every prop is only one episode of season two. <laughs> All right, next, Eric's done. Haley, how about you? Oh, right. my God. <laughs> now, I, was, I don't play video games, so I was not familiar with this character, and I looked it up. And oh, yeah, so is... Who's familiar with like Bloodborne or Dark Souls? Yeah. Oh it's... yeah. Yeah, cool. I figured. I, I figured at least like um. So my baby. Use the first ten minutes of it because it's hard as hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my baby mama ended up being Vicar Amelia from Bloodborne. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so heads up. This is heads up my. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> that is oh, cool. that is sick. Thank that you. Lighting, son. No. Yeah. Oh. That is sick. The dogs are excited too. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> so, with uh, each like prompt with this group, I try and focus on a skill to kind of work on because it's a good opportunity and it forces me to work on it because I have a deadline. So um, this time around, I was really trying to like create art with a story behind it. Like I wanted it to look like you're walking through the woods and you see the moon peering through the branches and you look over and you, you know, see this beautiful Miss Lady over here washing her hands after a snack kind of and uh, that and lighting i've been i really want to get good at lighting like i've i've well, always been inspired by really quality like dramatic lighting so i've been trying to bring that into my own artwork and man do i love making the ooky spooky so yeah. <laughs> i love this yeah, yeah. It does. It, it totally tells a story, and I know exactly what to look at right away. And th those arms sticking out there, it's like, it, I don't know, it's just, it's really creepy. It makes you curious, like, what does the rest of that look like? Right. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Vicar Amelia is very, like, she's covered in all of these rags, and Swamp Thing is covered in a bunch of Swamp Things. So I tried to, um, like when you zoom in, there's really, it's not very rendered, but I was trying to give it an appearance of like, you know, covered in her environment. And yeah, the details are there, actually. Cool. Yeah. I like how like your eye finishes it. Like if there's nothing there, you're to me, my eye finishes it. Mm hmm. I so love that. Oh. Wow. This time lapse of the whole process. Wow. Uh, yes. I went in with a flat brush with black and white on like half opacity and just carved at it. Like yeah. looking back at a process video of mine, it's always just, it doesn't look like I'm working on the same piece because it always just moves around so much. But oh my gosh, that's amazing. I love how you in incorporated like the veil 
that she wears mm -hmm. like stripes mm -hmm. over, but like into Swamp Thing's like nose. Mm -hmm. that we were talking about before we incorporated because directly underneath would be uh, the, top jaw, the top jaw so you just get these teeth like you know yeah without really any idea of what's underneath it's you i like so far how and then I, guys, oh sorry no, no, no i say i'm just gonna jump ahead a little bit because it's like a i boosted like usually about halfway through a piece when i feel like i'm slowing down i'll just like jump the contrast super hard and then work out all of the little details after that but sorry guys what were you saying so cool to me the nice really cool. artist the, the the weirdo that just sits in the corner in, in awe of you guys that blows my mind that the finished product of what you're showing us now i it blows my mind <laughs> it, it's one of those things that's really fun to go back and watch and then also mm -hmm. like with clients i know especially like to go back and actually watch the process it helps kind of connect the dots that like we don't just make this stuff up and then boom there it is it's not magic. exactly oh, you mean God. the computer yep. doesn't draw it for you mine does i want that i need that <laughs> tell ellen <laughs> her and i need her <laughs> i like how you uh chose to uh, the, the moon concept of this whole thing was was very cool but i i like how you ended up by not showing the moon so much and having that burst of light coming through that. yeah because oh, i started the cool. composition started off with a square can and this and then you can see me eventually like crop it down to yeah. that more mm. widescreen because i was i was trying to figure out like what was going on in my head and why I was kind of stuck in some places and it's usually just because I didn't think about the composition fully in the beginning and that's what's tripping me up but, I love that yeah, you just pulled up references mm -hmm. by the way uh, I love that uh, you just pulled up references for hands yep. and stuff so you didn't like uh -huh. so you didn't knew how like the hand could sit and even though we're not seeing them in the water you still took the time to look at the reference mm -hmm. you know and you just didn't like guess or whatnot so kudos on that <laughs> and off uh, my boyfriend's ear about this artist anthony jones oh, uh, i love anthony jones yeah so i've been watching a lot of his process videos and i was pretty heavily inspired to you know bring in that same process into this one if it's not it's bad. Yeah. There's, I was also having little moments when I was drawing this where I would just imagine also turning around and seeing them in the woods, <laughs> hearing a little, oh, <laughs> like, <you> just, <laughs> but maybe that's just my own giggle box. Yes. You gotta Good warn, warn somebody before zooming in creepy like that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hello, nightmares. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, really really like, <laughs> I really like your color and value choices in this. Yeah, hey, that's, always, yeah. yeah that's always a. Uh, it reminds me of the uh, scary things you tell, scary stories you tell in the dark, yes. dark or whatever. Back yeah. yeah. Hey, that's the best compliment you could ever give me. Yeah. That could be on the cover. <laughs> the, the, amazing. The, the artwork yeah. along with those covers was like creepy. Yeah. yeah. This, this is pulled exactly. Yeah, you you see what you see it now? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. This needs to be like a book of a ch like the cover of a children's horror book. Yeah. Or an adult. Children's horror book. <laughs> like, <laughs> 90s. You know, like, get that in 90s book. children's horror book. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Uh, no, this, this yeah. is great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't do video games, so I wish this was a comic. <laughs> well, now you will. No, I've tried. No, I won't. <laughs> I'm too old. I can't. It's like parents and VCRs. I, I can't get the video game. You can marvel at the character for a minute before it wrecks you, though. Okay. I like watching my kids play video games. <laughs> yeah. Pfeiffer, Thank you all for Pete. Incredible. Haley is, that a queen. is great. You're a queen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Back you. So. <laughs> if you ever decide to sell prints of that, contact us. Okay. <laughs> we're going to probably buy, all, we're gonna buy our own sketchbook, like, 
10 points. I know. <laughs> we'll need to make that calendar. We're, so we're we, like, we'll be yeah, like we the could, Girl Scouts calendar, and just yeah. kind of keep buying each other's cookies. That's what we are. <laughs> <laughs> I like cookies, yeah. Yeah, I like cookies. Well, you know, Virtual Vision Con is coming up. That will be two episodes from now for us. Yes. Uh, what is it? April yeah. 30th through May 2nd. I would love it if we could figure out a way to maybe tell some friends for you guys. Ooh. Look into that. We mentioned Ooh. a calendar once, but I don't think it's going to happen this year. <laughs> yeah. It'd be cool. The calendar first, then. <laughs> it's an art calendar. I will say a... this. I do, all it's jokes fun. aside, I really do miss the live show. I uh, miss all you guys out there. Fingers crossed if we can get a, a convention sooner than later. But I hope everyone's out there being safe. But I do miss y'all. We got to do this soon. And I hope things kind of normalize to where we can do that again. Yeah. yeah. I miss I miss everybody. I miss people. I miss Gigi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just the mingle. I miss the bad so. food. Yeah. Danny, Gary, guys, I, did, I, got, I got to log off. Chrissy's going to get to work. So. Oh, okay. Thanks okay, for man. stopping by. Hey. Yeah, you just anything? stop by and say hey, hey. Anything we should be looking out for soon, or just oh, hey, well, like anything for you go? Uh, just lots of comic book covers and in independent world soon. I can tell, but right now I can't. I got about five down the line I'm working on right now. So did and you I'll just show one? Did, did you huh? just show a cover? Now you just showed a cover online, right? Like you just posted yeah. one recently. Yeah, I posted one here recently. That was for uh, zombie eating cheerleaders and from outer space. Oh yeah, that looked awesome. I love. Yeah, that was a. Who comes up with the I don't know who done the colors. I gotta find out who done the colors, but I done the lines for it. So. Well, thanks for dropping in, David. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll be back next month if you guys want me. So. Yeah, just sure. be, be prepared. <laughs> Last Thursday of the month, uh, you'll be in the chat. You're always in the chat on Facebook. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, I'll I be tell back, everyone so. what's going on. So. Yeah. Okay. But get better. Get the eyes better. You're going to need Oh, those eyes. Time. They're coming back. Yeah. They're going to be good. <laughs> See you guys. Okay. Take care, man. Bye. Bye. Okay. Gary. You want me to go? Gary never, you know, you only want, you... Gary never goes last, and we're in the middle. That's, that is true. That's always the rule. Never go first, and I never go last. So I picked uh, Medusa from The Inhumans. Uh, which is funny because Caitlin picked down here. Well, she's on my screen down here. Uh, <laughs> she picked, yeah, right there. From uh, point she, she's Caitlin. doing uh, Medusa from Greek mythology. So it's going to be really cool, you know, see, seeing the two. And I, I'm curious <laughs> to know, like, what kind of similar, like, designs that you used. It, yeah. You know. So I'm excited about that. Hold on. Oh, you didn't peek, Gary? I forgot. I, I peeked. <laughs> I, I know, yeah, I know you think. <laughs> I don't want to have to keep I just, I just did close. a, oh, I oh. just did a portrait, but because uh, I was like, man, I don't have a, a a lot, a lot of time, so I just, I just did like a portrait, and uh, I did it all like in values first, like just in black and white. Like here, I'll take it apart for you. If you let me move this here because i feel like i'm looking the one that doesn't know later. comics medusa's the one with the giant red hair that she's an inhuman she's one of the inhumans she's black bolt's wife so when her and swamp thing got it on they made her <laughs> <laughs> she had to she had to move out of black bolt's house to miami to live with swamp thing <laughs> 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 Sorry, but um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> not sorry. Um, <laughs> so I started with uh, just the values here. Of course, I got like a hundred layers because that's just what I do. I don't want to like, like go through them all, um, but I tend to just kind of do one line layer. Uh, really rough too. It's not like completely completely finished, and then I'll just start um, kind of just blasting like light and shadow I, i'll usually zoom out to about like uh this size there so uh, it just like start throwing in chunks of like shadow and light and not even worrying about like detail you don't you're not supposed to worry about detail at that point just where you want the light to go and where you want 
you know, your eyes to go, where you want the viewer's eyes to go. Uh, and since, you know, of course, the face, I just made sure that was the b brightest part. And then after I do that, I zoom in and then I start doing um, more detailed values underneath. And then I start working on top of the line layer. Um, and then I made a color layer and all of it is like overlays and um, underneath and on top. So there's like my base black and white uh, value. And then underneath is like their base colors here. And then some that are overlaid on top. So like overlay, that one's a multiply layer, normal. Um, and for those that don't know, they just do different things like see through or make things brighter or whatnot. Um, and then after I finished it, I threw another layer over it and got my cool little effect there. I can't remember what the name of that lily is either. Uh, it's a it's a swamp lily, but I can't remember the name of it. Her face is stunning. Yeah, she looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, not like I don't know her. Like I don't know. Um, 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 oh, what's that singer that with Destiny's Child? Um, Beyonce. Beyonce. No, Beyonce. <laughs> Who's that singer with Destiny's Child? <laughs> Beyonce? Like the super famous one? <laughs> He's a metal kid. <laughs> At least I had it right. He broke like that out girl. child. <laughs> Gary, did you use like a photo reference for a model for no. this face? Okay. No. No, not, not, this, not this time. Have you ever drawn I was lazy. and realized it was Lauren? <laughs> What's that? Have you ever drawn some a woman and realized it was Lauren? No, but they say when you um, do draw people, you usually kind of like take pieces of like and parts of people that you know. Yeah. And like certain features, like oh, I like the way your cheekbone set, so you know you use that in a <laughs> drawing or something cheekbone. like that, or you know, this, <laughs> this person slouches weird or stands weird, so I'm gonna draw this character like that. You know, that kind of thing. Out here. We we borrow. You guys know this. We borrow from everyone the yeah. life the world you know it's like you feel like an artist yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> i actually had that book in the living room <laughs> um, it's wild or shakira i can't remember maybe it's a hair yeah gary i love your uh, rendering of the flower and the leaves the mm -hmm. hair is, is very Thanks, cool uh, i love how even you have the thorns coming at the viewer I love the, your tonal values and how you uh, work the light. This well, is you, all good. You know, you and I are like obsessed with lighting. You gotta be. Yeah, gotta be. dude, we're like obsessed with it. Like on Instagram, like we would just send each other art, but it's like crazy lighting. Like, and it's just like, you see the lighting on that dude? That, that was crazy. <laughs> 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 like if you go look like at my and Chet's Instagram chat, every single image in there is like some kind of like painted image of something with nutty lighting that someone did that just is crazy. They're like, oh, we want to do that. That's cool. <laughs> so. I think that shows a, a level of development. I think when you get to a certain point and you've mastered certain things, you've got those under your belt. I think lighting is one of those, just like with guitar players, tone is always the last thing they master, right? So I think in, in, in the art world, it's it's one of those things that are, are showing you you're there. Because when you start playing with light, then you start really, really bringing in warmth and, and, and all kinds of lifeness into your work. And this, this represents that very well. Thanks, ma'am. And, you know, I, I was kind of like trying to figure out like uh, more economic ways of rendering an image too. That's why I started like in values first. It right. seemed, uh, instead of like putting the colors in, uh, I seemed like I had more control over the lighting when I did it in values first, and then like I could render more lighting on top of that using like the overlays and stuff. So, I mean, it might be something I might try again in the future because I felt like you know really comfortable rendering this image. So, you know, who knows? <laughs> Krista, Krista says in black and white, she thinks it looks like Anne Hathaway. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. If you put a gold foil Marvel masterpieces across the bottom, I totally would have. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, give me just a second. I'll go on Google. 
I honestly like I if, at first glance I thought maybe like She Hulk and mm. and uh, yeah. Somebody's mad back there. <laughs> <laughs> Bedtime. But I, this actually, this part right here is one of my favorite parts of the image. Oh, uh, the awesome. little growth of the. Yeah, I, I don't do know if it. you guys ever do this, but I wait. James does. James does. I know James does this, but like you'll do a whole piece, and you're like, I like this little corner right here. <laughs> See the way I made these four dots. Man, that shit is cold, man. Look at those dots. <laughs> a five-hour dandelion. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they could be a print of its own. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't stop staring at the, the rim light uh, on the vines up there in the top right corner. Oh, yeah. That's just beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Light, lighting is so fun to play with when you're, when you're painting, you know, because you're going to get it wrong a lot and it's really frustrating, but yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> one of the people that, one, uh, one of the artists that made me really, really, that made me super interested in lighting, uh, believe it or not, was Dave Raposa. He really got me into like lighting. What's his name? Dave Raposa. Uh, uh, Daryl actually used to do uh, Crimson Daggers. He used to do yeah. a lot of uh, do. I, you were part of that forum or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, no, I, I followed the forum. I watched all of his live streams. The, the dude's awesome, and that yeah, his his rim light stuff was it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's insane, super insane. He actually he he does a, a Patreon now that's got all the breakdowns of the different stuff he does, and his is one of the few Gumroads. Where I'm like, I will happily pay you ten dollars because all of his videos are like sixteen or twenty hours. Yeah. Of of tutorial stuff. Yeah, he's he's amazing. Yeah, he's yeah he he's not human. Like his work is insane. The guy is not excuse the language fucking human. It's nuts. Dude. <laughs> I love how unrendered the vines are next to just like this wildly rendered and how i didn't even notice it until like, right yeah, yeah are you talking about these guys here no on the left like those versus oh, yeah. like flower like it's such a short space between that wild flower and then like those vines on the left but it's, it's, it's well it's, i didn't want you to look there that's why <laughs> <laughs> see like I, again it's an illusion I didn't want you to look there. <laughs> I work smarter, not harder. I was like, I'm just going to put a big old fat arrow right here. Just tell them to look here. <laughs> but, uh, you got enough texture on those vines, though, that it, until you zoom in, I don't read them as anything less than a lot of detail. Right. They're just lines that just take. Yeah, I like the little, the little whirly do. Right. And after that effect that you put on it, Gary, it just adds to that. Yeah. Is this the version without? Yep. When you add the effect, it makes it a lot more busier. A lot more busier. There's something about a lot it. More busier. Hey, I'm, yeah. I'm making these sentences up as I go along. Hey, dude, we do it all the time. Don't even feel bad. You are amongst friends. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's it for me. You know, thanks for checking it out, guys. I appreciate it. See, this is one of those, um, I don't read in humans, but I, this, if this was on the cover, it would stop me. I would pick up that book and look through it. Well, you should tell Marvel to let me draw the Inhumans and yeah. I can make that real for you. Yeah, let me call him right up. I talked to him all the time. <laughs> Just call Mr. Faggy on your phone and just say, hey. <laughs> but no, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. And anybody um, watching this and wanting to get closer looks at all this art, um, there will be an album on the Vision Cons Facebook page. By this Especially week. Kevin Faggy. <laughs> <laughs> when you're ready to look closer and hire these people, there's links in the mm -hmm. video. But um, yeah, we'll have the album up and you can go through it and it will have links for all the artists so you can see even more and buy their stuff. <laughs> okay, next, 
How about our new fresh blood? Chet? No! Are you fresh ready? Blood? <laughs> no! Fresh blood. All right, let me see if I can figure this out. Fresh blood. It's just like we practice, Chet. We all get to him if he doesn't figure it out the first time, right? Everybody gets one mistake. Isn't that what you said, Gary? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot who your prompt was. <laughs> oh my god. That's cool, man. So that's about as wrong as I can make it. So <laughs> who put so much into the parents? That's a, I a long poster too. I like that. That's <laughs> I, I figured they needed to be a part of this, right? It's oh, wrong right again. Oh, so this I... all started out with a with a Bernie Wrightston study with the swamp thing. It's a good study. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I, 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 part of me was like, did he just like copy and paste swamp thing onto that? But that's no. a damn good study. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so after that, I said, well, who are we going to make for a spouse? And I said, well, we can't just. <laughs> So I thought sexy Velma, she wasn't on the list. Yeah, that's like, oh my God. It's like she cut off half her skirt and stuffed it into her bra. <laughs> you know, it was referenced from somebody else's thing on the internet. So I, I decided that was yeah, cool. Let's just throw that in there. It's still far more accurate than a lot of Velmas out there. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. I love her. That's my favorite Velma I've ever seen. <laughs> I will uh, I will show uh, some of the Wrightston study. So it faces cool, man. Nice. Wow. So this is Wrightston's original work, and it's very hard to do digital pen the same way this yeah. this pen work is just amazing and it will drive you insane. So mm. uh, so that's that's how the Wrightston that's how the whole thing got started. And then I did a Wrightston style tree and then the grass and then I just said I don't even as a matter of fact, I, I was so lost on where to go with this. I just put Bart Simpson in a swamp in front of this and he was doing their Nirvana album cover. He was swimming for the the money. Oh. <laughs> And and then I said, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up. So I destroyed it all and started all over again. So this is where I had, and this is where I ended up. So I found a child picture on the internet, and basically used that as a reference. That's, that's really good. Like and then kind of made it more like a school picture pose, and uh, just uh, started adding the swamp thing features. So I had a friend of mine said, well, Velma's looking off in the, uh, what's going on here? And I said, well, the story behind this is she's much like daddy. So she wants to play in the swamp and, and they're looking for her now. Oh, I love it. She looks so sweet and innocent. I know, right? <laughs> they all do at a young age. <laughs> <laughs> and then they How'd you guys be? Mommy tried to pull daddy's head off and she thought it was a mask. <laughs> oh shit yeah that's really cool man i like his pose oh rendered so, yeah he captured that really well mm -hmm. the flow of her hair with the shoulders and like the swamp man. features is really nice it looks like a classic movie like yeah yeah one of those old poster. school movies yeah so the Velma drawing, you know, from animation and everything is very flat. And so I wanted to kind of do the entire piece of work as a Bernie tribute. And, and you really can't. If you put those flat black values on that character, it, just, it would just blow it out. So I, I kept struggling with that. So I just decided to do Velma like this and then just go in and, and shade. So there's almost three different art styles going on on this. So there's the, the Wrightston study with the Swamp Thing, and there's there's a different style here altogether, so that you don't lose the, um, you know, so the character's still recognizable. And then there's, this is more like my style. So this is just, uh, you know, taking a, a reference from a photo and just, just drawing it in. And this would, so there's three different tributes going on here, I guess. 
but it still works though. Yeah, well, I tried. Oh, to, yeah. That was the hardest thing is bringing them all together. Yeah, like my brain doesn't go like, oh, that looks like this. It's like, oh, that's cool. Like, because it all works. It, yeah, it all flows totally awesome. together. Yeah. Well, I'm also pretty familiar with your style, chat. Like, we see a little bit of everything from a collection of things that you've done over the last like couple of years that we've been really hanging out on a more regular basis. So for us, like each piece is like, yep, that's chat. Yep. That's chat. Yep. That's chat. <laughs> so. this is what he's been leading to all along. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. This is, this was my, this was my epic thing. Now I can shut it all down and go home. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've hit the pinnacle. Right. You have every right to. It's amazing. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, the tree, like the detail in the branches in the tree where it looks like you just took, I imagine, like a round brush and just carved it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's this is a thing that uh, uh, Gary and I like to do. We like to leave those marks, those little floaties, mm -hmm. whenever you erase. It kind of gives character to the, the piece of artwork. Right. And it you just... scribble in the tree. You scribble, you like, you, you didn't carve in a tree or make a tree. It's like you carved the tree out of the background. Right. Yeah. That's pretty neat. You get some really cool shapes doing that too. Oh yeah. When you carve it compared to like drawing it and then doing it. Right. And you're just like instead of just you just making these crazy primitive shapes, you can shave them down. And so that's always always been fun to me. Filling in stuff with a paint knife. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great stuff, dude. And I have to tell you, the hardest part of all this was actually drawing Bart Simpson the first time I drew him. <laughs> There's a very particular uh, number of spikes on his head. The the uh, Simpson thing as simple as it is, and to, to to draw that, I would hate to be on that team. I I couldn't do it because my mind just isn't wired that way. All right. Well, thanks for saying, I I just keep like I'm mesmerized by her big blue eyes. I just I just can't stop staring at her. I want to hug her. <laughs> Do you want to see the photo <laughs> reference? Sure. Okay. Like, I imagine, you know, she's giving you those baby doll eyes, but she's also stabbing you in the stomach with like a twig. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Aww. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Nice. I love seeing how people interpret references. Yeah. So I love it. Dig it. <laughs> Perfect. Now we expect you to come back. We love it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you keep drawing skirts that short, Chet, you can come back whenever you All want. right. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> That's how we get artists on here. We just put a box <laughs> and a stick underneath and a sandwich and a big old line of string. And a short skirt. <laughs> <laughs> And just snatch that out of there and get out of that box. Ooh, piece of candy. Piece of candy. <laughs> That's how I got you. <laughs> All right. Let's let's go back for some girl power now. Caitlin, how about you? Yeah, sure. You're our, our other Medusa, aren't you? I am the other Medusa. Yeah. And I um I went a lot younger. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, Kid Velma Swamp Thing was probably younger than what I went with, but uh, I definitely went with like uh, with the prompt to go like I don't know preschool kindergarten age, and so I went with uh, kind of a child, and I tried to put together a story. Uh, let's see. Because uh, I've been trying to get better at kind of having storytelling with my illustrations. All right. Oh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, awesome. So. <laughs> Sorry, no, this the is... Pandora lunchbox. Pandora yeah. lunchbox. All day. All day. Oh. <laughs> Missing tooth. Sorry, so, please continue. <laughs> So my original uh, thought with this was, okay, for going with a small child, what do I remember from being a small child uh, show and tell day? Uh, so I thought it'd be fun for her to bring her pet gerbil, which um, has been petrified. 
No. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> um, and so, and then, you know, parents like to take their photos of the kids, you know, when they do things. So I thought I'd make it into like a little Polaroid picture uh, so that they could yes. hang it on the refrigerator. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got the Pandora lunchbox. Pandora lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> the little snakes, you know, her pigtails pulled oh. back. She's so, so. sweet. <laughs> um, I like alligator door, door knocker. Yeah, the door you know. knocker. That's just clever. That's, clever. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. That's great. Is oh the, my God. Uh, I have to ask, is the hamster, is that a lunchbox for the snakes? <laughs> I don't know. Well, apparently at some point, as soon as she got nice. it, she looked at it and it, it's been that yeah she's something. so excited to show show it to her class though you know so <laughs> <laughs> the poor thing i love the survived. wrapping on her arms and her legs and then but with the yeah. pretty dress like yeah i like yeah. how everything is so thought out right it's like <laughs> the, the door i mean down to the hair the dress the, like, the lunchbox <laughs> i mean everything i mean this is i i, I Really, really, really dig this, man. And this is so a happy. great got rosy character cheese, design. Rosy tooth and right here. Here. Great character yeah. design. <laughs> so I also, uh, I know one of the things you guys wrote in the email was to try to think of a name. Hey, <laughs> I was going to ask you if anybody did that. Yeah, so oh. it doesn't, it, it sounds like an odd name, but this is my reasoning. Um, I, I, I call her Cotton. <laughs> because uh, I wanted to do kind of a symbolic uh, snake and swamp thing. And so <laughs> I did some Google searches to see what the most common snake is in swamps. And it's a cotton mouth. So. Of course it is. <laughs> oh, interesting. So, okay. Yeah. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm calling her. Uh, so little cotton, all ready to go to school <laughs> for show and tell day. I adore her. That's so funny. I love the Polaroid and the just the <laughs> the painted look style. I don't know. Everything about this seems really well thought out, but Thanks. still simple and just like you just look around and you catch references to something. That's yes. this is well put together. I uh, and her eyes are just offset enough to where she's looking not directly at the camera. That alone is like you captured the perfect like. It, I don't have kids, but. That's like every kid in their first day of school pick, where they're not paying attention at all to whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I had a ton of fun at this. Uh, normally, I wouldn't draw this kind of stuff. Like, I've never drawn, like, little kids before, so it was a really fun challenge. And then just being able to kind of put together a story to tell in the illustration um, was was something I really had fun with. I love that all of you guys are doing that. Like, you guys are all been doing the storytelling you know the, adding this narrative to your work so I'm very excited about that that's awesome <laughs> very cool and yeah thank great. you your usage of colors I, I always like your usage of color yeah that's uh, great like, thank you i i'm trying to get better constantly so <laughs> might have to use some of your lighting tips next time <laughs> <laughs> I love how it looks like a photo, like yeah. the bushes in the house in the back as well, where it's not completely huh. like rendered or over detailed. But you still, man, this is so freaking cute. I know that's just like a silly, not like productive thing to say about it, but it just makes my heart really happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those people that loves Easter eggs, and I feel mm -hmm. like every time I look, I find something else adorable you've added. <laughs> the little petrified hamster yeah. is my favorite <laughs> in this episode so far. Like, <laughs> for a minute, I see the stone detail of it. I just yeah. thought it was scary for a second. But <laughs> no, honestly, this is, could be like page one of like a a, a children's book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Of thanks. like you know some <laughs> girl that looks different or is different from the rest of her classmates, and you know I don't know. Yeah. I see like it unfolding from here. It really reminded, when I was working on this, it reminded me of this old, uh, back to Scooby-Doo, uh, movie, like, back in the 90s or whenever, I don't know when it came out, but uh, where they went to, like, a ghoul school, and they had to, like, they were with, like, a whole bunch of, like, monster girls, and so I was like, oh, she would fit right in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> monster high? Yeah, I, 
I think it was maybe, I don't know. I don't know what the name of the movie was, but it was, yeah. I had it on VHS back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> then it must have been old, right? Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very well done. I love this. So, yeah. That is my Medusa Swamp Thing. I don't know what the head cannon is for how they hooked up, but <laughs> no one needs to it. It doesn't it seems like, it's awesome. best if we just don't think about it any of these. Right? <laughs> so no one moved out of anyone's house to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Swamp Thing had to keep his eyes shut the whole time. <laughs> right? Or another scenario I won't say out loud. <laughs> we will go there. That's what you're thinking about. <laughs> this is for a children's book, so. <laughs> Krista, said, Krista says that's adorable, and James Daly, crazy cute, love it. <laughs> hey, Dina, well paper yeah. or plastic. <laughs> so, all right, thanks, guys. Oh god, yeah, that's wonderful. Like, mm -hmm. She just looks so happy. She's just so excited. I almost I want to see like a, more characters, like it, like a just more like from that world. Like her classroom. I do too. Like, I don't, <laughs> is she going to a normal school? Is she? Are, uh, <laughs> is it a class of nothing but his spawn that, of different? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're gonna be like a dolphin fin kid there, or something <laughs> like, <laughs> like a My Hero Academia scenario. No. Right. There's one normal human who is adopted. <laughs> he's the weird one <laughs> he's the weird one yeah. <laughs> all right Nate you are up all right <clears throat> and your character is I never say it right Cthulhu 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 yeah Cthulhu, Cthulhu <laughs> crack and I ended up going with Cthulhu mostly Actually, I did. I, I finally made a decision. <laughs> so, so far, it seems as though I'm the only one that actually went with a baby. I, I didn't I didn't think about it. Um, but a lot of the, de the decisions I was making with this... Um, so I played Injustice 2 a lot. And in that game, uh, Swamp Thing is a playable character. And... Uh, he has a lot of different variations to because you can change their armor and sit and, their, and how they look. Well, there's a lot of them where a lot of the bark he wears is like grown up as armor. So that was kind of the inspiration for like his his arms, like his arms being like kind of shielded with this mossy bark, and then like his legs, his shins, you know, having um, a growth to it. Um. And then I, you know, having gills on the side, you know, just because I imagine Cthulhu would have something like that. Being kind of an aquatic in nature, but like, I don't know if you ever, well, I mean, a lot of you have, when you have kittens or when you have puppies and you buy them or you or buy them or whatever, you, you first get them, they, they have a certain color to them. But then as they grow older, like their color completely changes or swaps to something. So I have... Um, you know, he's got that bluish kind of aquatic look to him, but as he's getting older, like, as he's growing, like, there's another, the other side of him is starting to kind of, like, creep in, like, underneath his, his head, his headlocks, and his, you see the green in the side, and uh, as he's maturing, I suppose, maybe, like, puberty, more moss, or, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, this or... is kind of early stages of what, I suppose. So far, we've done a pretty good job at just, like, actually going down the line as far as age. Like, it's got continuously <laughs> younger. It's a very good line that we had going on. I heard baby's oh, nails grow fast, but man, look at those toenails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little wing hooks, you know, they, they kind of took over for... I'm digging the eyes and the forehead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you zoom in a little? Sure. I keep catching myself sticking my face up to my computer. I know. So, I know. <laughs> I forget it's not as big for you as it is for me. I'm sorry. He's got a, kind of a glowing scale kind of C. I like those. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know what pissed him off, but whatever it is, he's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> kind of summoning something, you know, dark. Just coming from nature. Is his diaper full? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 all 
No, uh, I mean, there wasn't really, I was, it, the only real challenge was figuring out, because it was easy for me to get the Cthulhu references in there, but then to, like, get plenty of, and again, like, I wanted to kind of reference the fact that when they're young, you know, they, they seem like they're going in this direction, but as they get older, they kind of change, and, you know. Mm -hmm. I like how we all interpreted it, too, like, how some of us felt like we had to do a kid, or, you know, the prompt was fun. He's so dang cute, that little chubby baby valley. <laughs> that little bottom lip. <laughs> yeah. You know, I uh, he's, he's had he had the 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 swamp thing chops in the beginning for a while. But then he kind of looked like an old man, and then he kind of looked like Remy <laughs> from Motorhead because he had like <laughs> because I had the the moss go like around the bottom of his little cheeks, and then the wife was like, "Oh, I like his little mutton cheeks," and I'm like, "Okay," and she goes, "But don't put it." We had to. We had to think, kick it around for a little bit, whether or not to include it. But you know, maybe mm -hmm. if we did a teenager version, he'll have the the metal chops. Well, a really just thin moss on his upper lip for a little while. <laughs> just that, little <laughs> 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 that Romero stash, mm -hmm. really thin, creepy stash. Now, what what did you do this in, Nate? This was uh, I did all the line work in. Um, well, I got the. The drawing, the pencil work, actually it's still in the scanner. <laughs> I did the, I did all the, the line work in uh, pencil and then scanned it in. Uh, Illustrator for the line work and um, and then uh, Photoshop to, uh, to color, yeah, for colors and textures. I had, I made a couple of brushes. I actually took, um, I made the, uh, the moss brush. Yeah. This um, the leaves are actually three different leaf brushes that I kind of layered on top of each other. I kind of went Bob Ross style, where I went from dark to light, and I, nice. I and I and I added white just to kind of you know help accent him. And I thought it was pretty neat. I didn't know what to do with the background. I tried a couple different things. I didn't like anything. I think it looks fine with the white background. Yeah, with the glow yeah. of the, the the almost the sea salt kind of speckling on his in a, in a scale, you know. Yeah. And, and I thought it looked better with it light or white. So, like I can picture this as like a toy or something. <laughs> you know like it's some kind of statue or some kind of like vinyl figure you get on kid robot or something <laughs> the merchandising opportunities from tonight have been impressive <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> toys, lunch boxes. Where they're gonna, there's gonna be a whole comic franchise or a whole new like tv like animated series on netflix right after this show and <laughs> <gonna kick> <laughs> it's the swamp thing <laughs> it's the swamp yeah Man, this is <laughs> This is better like, than Spaceballs the Flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> the kids love well, like 12 and Counting or whatever it is, that show where they just keep having kids, but these are Swamp <laughs> Thing. <Yeah. laughs> Anyways. Good job, Nate. Thank you. I'm dope. He's cute. <laughs> love it. All right. We have one left. Daryl. Are you ready? Yeah. And you uh, did King Kong, correct? Yes. I called him Swamp Monkey. No. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. oh man. <laughs> what? Is this a poster? <laughs> wow. Whoa, dude. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted the main All thing right. was I wanted to put him in New York instead of the Skull Island. Just so the jungle elements were a little more out of place, um, but yeah, I I don't know. And I started traditional because I thought it might actually help me a little bit, make it look a little bit more organic. But in the end, it was just really sloppy. So I'll bring up. So I did it in watercolor, and that was my base. Yeah, cool. And then. That's yeah, why I'm just, loving the color values so much. Yeah. Man, um, I just added, just played with the sky, and I'm not very good with color. Well, that's kind of my big downfall. And so it was lots of color things. And my wife, she liked my original color background of reds, but I didn't, I was not confident in how well he stood out. So I just changed stuff like that. But um, I actually like that one better. I like the, that one. But yeah, so I just spent way too much time doodling in all the little <laughs> vines and No, it paid off, man. It looks like yeah. a like a vintage. It looks like yeah. a uh, 
like a really old Magic the Gathering card. Well, it's, oh, the, yeah. I was not shooting for any particular style, but as I got near finishing it, I was like, this reminds me of something, and I cannot place what it is. It's like something you see on one of those old mag those magazines, the like fantasy magazines, like Creepy or... Yeah. Uh, yeah, like those cryptozoic. Yeah, or like Amazing Stories or, mm. you know, just those creature monster magazines from like the 70s and 80s. Yeah. This, this I love work. jokes in the back. Those are really nice. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah the, color, the coloring on, on the monkey, Swamp Monkey himself, I love how that all comes together. Just, I see greens and reds and purple. Hey, hey, listen now. Kong's not a monkey. He's an ape. He's part of the great ape family. <laughs> <laughs> that must be his pet name, Little Swamp Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> not so yeah, little anymore. I'm assuming his eyes are red all the time, so you can't tell that he's pissed about it. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. I wanted to draw him kind of chill, just. <laughs> because if it's a gorilla, they're always roaring and like every single image, you know, illustration anyway. And he's still, <laughs> so I was, I, I used a, a photo reference to look off of and there is a monkey out there, a gorilla that I, he's in some, he's on like Shanghai or something like that. But he's known as the handsome gorilla. Yes. <laughs> because he likes to pose and whatnot. And so this is one of his laid back casual <laughs> <laughs> his eyes have a an un, an un, not so normal amount of white around like almost more humanized than than yeah. typical and yeah, uh, yeah so he's got more place. far more facial expression just because of his eyes and his poses alone yeah there was there was lots of comments from ladies going i feel uncomfortable with how attractive i find this gorilla yeah <laughs> <laughs> good work girl yeah those colors strong yeah. composition really amazing so just so just so i'm not mistaken like you drew it traditionally and then watercolored it traditionally and then enhanced yeah. it in photoshop like you added um, i guess more color to it or whatever uh yeah a little bit um most of the color was in the watercolor and then it was i i spent like two days cleaning up my watercolor to get the lines tight like i wanted and then the last day, just actually doing detail stuff. But almost all the color was from the original watercolor that I just, you know, selected and copied. So, yeah. Wow. He's very cool. He's fancy. And I like how the brush strokes serve as buildings. Like, mm -hmm. it's yeah. kind of, it's like kind of abstract, but it's not at the same time. Yeah, Great stuff, man. I was afraid I'd get lost in trying to do like because I because uh, Google Earth has it where you can do the 3D view of like the big landmarks. Yeah, and so I like, I got that's I that's what I used to reference was the Google Earth and I lined the everything up like I wanted, and I could have spent way too long on that background, but I think mind. it's like all the buildings and those brushstrokes in the background are also square and linear going across one direction and then Kong himself right in the center or Swamp Kong in the center has got those good fuzzy round textures so he stands out really well I think this piece is awesome I yeah. love it yeah. <laughs> textures yeah. are really good mm. and watercolor is tough dude it is tough it, yeah that's what I've been working on the last like year is trying to use because as a, when I was younger trying to use it, I could never get anything to work like I wanted, but I was expecting it to be like one and done. Like you put down the color and that's where it is. But oddly working as a, a visual effects compositor, you learn like half of it's just layering things to get one look. And it actually kind of helped me a little bit understand watercolor a little better. So, but yeah. Hey, you did a great job with the edges. Yeah. Thank you. Great, very impressive, man. I think there's both a compliment and like people talking a lot about your art and then people just being silent, just <laughs> staring at it. And they're like, oh, man. I like, no worries. It's just fucking awesome. 
Frugan, sorry. Family friendly. Family friendly. For the Family friendly, awesome. For the children. For the children. For the children. <laughs> <laughs> that we all watch WandaVision. Very good. Yeah, that's a that's a beautiful piece, man. You guys are killing it tonight. Jesus, man. Man, I think this one's my favorite episode that we've had so far. Man, this is. I say, I say that every after every episode, I'm like, oh, this was the best one. <laughs> oh no, this was the best one. <laughs> Now, anybody watching that's new to this or just doesn't realize, they only have, I think, a week and a half. Generally a week. That's if you start when you should, right? When you get there. Exactly. <laughs> For all we know, they have one. All of us are just like. <laughs> yeah, a week, which just means shaking and days to think about it and then one day to draw it. Exactly. <laughs> right. For me, somebody like me, though, it. The hardest part and the most time-consuming part is wrapping the head around what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Once it's there, all I have to do is just do it. And yeah, that takes time. And I might spend six or eight hours on it, but it's like, it doesn't bother me. I usually, like, at the beginning of the week when we first get the prompt, I'll instantly jump into it for, like, an hour or two because I'm just riled up and I get really excited. And then I don't touch it until, like, two days before we have to turn it in. <laughs> and then I do another last little <laughs> and then I just turn it in. Because oh I spent all the time thinking about it. But. That was one of the reasons why I did the watercolor, because I knew I would have to let it dry in yeah. layers <laughs> force me to actually start a couple of days early. Mm. Nice. Well, Chet, you were talking about doing yours. You, you started yours, like, not long after we got the prompt, wasn't it? Like, you were... Well, I I wasn't sure that I was even going to be a part of this, but I decided to do the Bernie Wrightson study, and then that turned into you know something else. And I spent so much time on that that I decided whenever I moved, I tried to make that work inside of a composition, which <laughs> I was failing miserably there for a while. But yeah, I didn't want to waste that work, so I started right away just because I wanted to do a Bernie study, and I knew how complex yeah, it. Yeah. Well, they say all the all this all those studies actually stick with you better if you use them in something yeah. as opposed to just I, to off practice. I definitely learned a lot from this. I'm I'm an artist that maybe spends thirty minutes on something. I don't spend a lot of time on something. So this was this was kind of one of those late nighters. So uh, there was a lot of and then going back the next night looking at it again and then the next night looking at it again and yeah. So you tear it apart and put it all back together again. So yeah, you definitely learn a lot from this. So I appreciate you guys inviting me here. Dude, glad you're here, man. You're stuck now. Door's yeah. locked behind you. Yeah. Well, uh, well, <laughs> well, uh, well, <laughs> in a box, leave. baby. It works every time. <laughs> now I'm curious. Have any of you that have have been drawing with the pink like this year um, ever gone with like the first thing you picked, it worked, or do you all go through this process of constantly changing your idea? Yeah, let's go around the room with this question. Uh, Eric, we'll start with you because you quiet over there, man. Okay. okay. So, uh, <laughs> <Take> out, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> but most of the time, I mean, I have pretty awesome ideas, so I just don't <laughs> <laughs> what? Can't even hate on that, man. <laughs> Gotta respect that hustle. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, right on. So Eric, when you're not becoming a player. <laughs> <laughs> My motto would just be excellent all the time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So like, do you uh, do you just like know like all jokes aside, like you just know like what you want to do, or like sometimes you have design processes, or sometimes it's like okay, I know I want to do that and that exactly. Most of the time, honestly, I really come up with. I try to come up with at least like three thumbnails for. This is one view. This is a different view that tells the same story as the other one, and presents it a different way gives me a better composition or something. I've got to find, you know, some other idea that'll work for it. <laughs> uh, this time, 
it was the first idea. It was pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even sometimes, even if you explore other ideas, like say you might have done three, sometimes you just go right back to the first one. You're like, man, you know what? This was cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's definitely something we said about intuition. Especially yeah. if you're like already a fan of the property anyway. There's that little thing in the back. You've had that discussion with the buddies, like, wouldn't it be awesome? If we saw this character fighting this guy, and you know, so you've already got the scene right in your head. Oh, you mean, ID, you mean IDW? Is that what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they do. Yeah. They, then it's the <laughs> artist that gets in there and starts going, well, is that the best composition? Am I really going to have time for that? I mean, really going to have time for that? And, yeah. <laughs> What about you, James? What about your uh, your process? It's constantly being revised all the time. <laughs> I mean, I'll do a couple sketches, throw it away. I mean, you know me, I throw everything away. <laughs> yeah, you're insane, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always constantly revising, reworking. Um it's like, oh, and then my biggest problem is like, oh, I want to add this, but where do I shove it type of thing? That's my biggest problem. It's like, oh, this is, you know, like this one here, uh, that that landscape. It was like, oh, I need to add this element in there. Well, where the hell am I going to shove this damn thing? And then, <laughs> yeah, and then I get distracted, that, that focus, that deep focus of, well, I got to do this, like the dandelion thing. I spent all day. It's like for some reason, on a on a, a smart object, it gets shrunk down to about that big. You know? Dude, that's gonna have a name. We're gonna start calling that the dandelion effect. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's like the, the dandelion. Waste of time, Rutherford project process. Right. <laughs> but everybody, all of us, can identify with it. The dandelion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so does, does the deadline? of the showtime and it's happening does that make you work faster or does it censor your choices no like, i like the deadline yeah. i find it cool I'm if it were a deadline i would work on a piece until i died you know like the <laughs> deadline just allows me to actually finish the piece yeah. until i have a deadline i probably wouldn't start it <laughs> yeah <laughs> And I say that because, like I said, most of the, 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 the most difficult part of my head is just, just figuring out what's most important, how am I going to capture that? And then once I have that visually in my head, like, all I have to do is put it from here to here. Now, granted, in my process, it actually ends up looking cooler when it's done than what I, the, the big picture that I had. But um, that's just because as I'm going, like, you know, happy little accidents kind of inspire other other versions or other and it's just like like the color over here would be like oh that would be cool if it was like had this this accent and then if that accent had a glow that affected this over here and then so it just kind of it's like a puzzle but once the main message is there like i'm i'm okay like we're fine so honestly if if it takes me a week to do four hours of work if i have a whole week that's probably the way it's going to break down because that four hours is going to be the most productive hours I've ever had because I had a whole week to think on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's there's some psychological principle that says uh, whatever amount of time you have for a project, that's how long it'll take you to do that project, no matter what. Yeah. I think you just learn to trust your own process and your own brain. Yeah. Hard to do. Well, surprise, well, guys! We're having another show tomorrow night, and you all have to have a piece for it. <laughs> I think I think as creators and as artists like uh, we probably uh, have a secret folder full of things that we've never shared that we'd be like hey, I just whipped this up <laughs> <laughs> the vault or the vault right yeah um, I think with art and, and working on pieces and stuff uh, uh, you're right you know the it takes us the amount of time that you give us because as artists, we squeeze it every single damn second that we mm -hmm. have, like up to the deadline. Because sometimes we'll pick at stuff and we're like, oh, well, they're not going to like this. Or, you know, or, you know, if you're dealing with a client or whatever, you know, they might not like it or they'll send it back like a hundred times. But if we, if by, on our, by ourselves, if we're allowed to just work on it, yeah, we'll just, 
we'll work on it to that last second. That's another reason why I turned in my piece to the folder at like 8 a.m. Because I knew <laughs> that I would just like kill it by working on it too hard. I was like, if it's turned in, then I can't touch right. it. It's not so much for the project or for you. It's more for us. Be like, just get yeah. it out of my life. I can move on. Yeah. I know that I had, whenever I was in school, I actually did graphic design full time and then went to school after work. And uh, it was weird being paid to do artwork and projects for people on a very strict timeline. And then and, and then going to a school and paying them to teach me what I already do. Anyways, um, <laughs> what was interesting was when they would be like, all right, well, here's the project. Here's what's expected of you. Here's the due date. And I'm like, can I just work on this at home? Because I have everything there. Like, you know, so I would get things done, but I would intermix it with actual work projects or independent projects. So it's just like if I hit a deadline, like if the deadline was like two and a half weeks, well, I only needed like three days. And I, well, that's not due yet. Take this now because I will not leave it alone until, you know, and, and it's going to get lost in the other stuff. So please just take it now. And uh, I, I got decent about like, and a lot of clients, they sometimes get upset if you do it too quickly. Well, they're like, really? I paid this much and you did it in like three days? What, what could you have done and if you took the whole week? And it's like, it doesn't work. It's that whole theory <laughs> of where like people only want products if they're really expensive, you know? Like, even if it's an amazing product, but it's only like $2, people probably won't buy it because they're like, well, why is it only $2? That doesn't seem right. right. When it's probably still a great product. It's the same thing. Like, and I was watching a podcast slash stream about how um, as a professional artist and people were asking questions. One of the questions was, uh, well, how many layers do you use and how long does it take for you to do a piece? And he's like, however long I need and however many I need. And it's like, well, clients rarely will ask you, um, like when you give them a piece, it's usually just like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, thanks. Here's your money. Have a nice one. They're yeah. not going to be like, nobody well, asked us. How many layers did you use? Like, did you use a square brush or a round brush? They don't give a shit. Like, yeah, just, they don't, it's they don't know all that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't even know. It's like, where'd you get your degree? <laughs> um <laughs> no it is that is the only thing that i the only pushback i ever got was like if you could do this in like it, something that took you like 15 minutes what could you have done if i gave you like a week like well actually it's more like 45 but we're not gonna split hairs here or you just say you know it is gonna take a week because you're i'm gonna give it to you you're gonna give me feedback and then I'm, we're gonna do this rodeo yeah that's why done. i always overshoot if i have control over the deadline i'm gonna overshoot Oh yeah, <laughs> and they may come in two days early just to you know. <laughs> be cool, but <laughs> I'm going to ignore it for the first yeah. week and a half. <laughs> well, not ignore it, but at least kick it around. <laughs> Deanna, we we're we're chatting up a storm. We're not dragging this out by any means. I was we? just about to say we need. We're going to hit the plug zone. Yeah. To find out where everybody can find you guys um, until next month. So I'm just going to go back. I lost my list. Same order we did. Um, Dave... in a hut in Acapulco. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and... Sam, do you get to talk about you and Anna? Uh, well, I can't pronounce this. <laughs> <Deep down. laughs> Tell it. And everybody uh, that's watching, it, if it's on Facebook, it will be in the chat. All the links they're going to mention. And um, on YouTube, it will be underneath the video. All the links. Yeah, so I'm, I changed mine. The Hitsuji is no longer working. I switched that over to something a little more uh, functional and memorable. And that's the J. Rutherford Art uh, at Instagram. Uh, Anna's got her... Uh, I, 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 A O I dash R Y U uh, with her Tumblr, uh, her Pinterest, and her DeviantArt all under the same same name. Awesome. All right, Eric, where can I, what are you up to, and where can everybody find you? So uh, I've been doing a lot of watercolor sketches lately. Um, Let's see. Uh, just find me on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook as E Danger Right, and uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> okay, Haley. 
got the same Instagram, cyan underscore stash. And then I've got that um, society sit shop with some prints up. I also like recently ordered some tapestries off of it. Holy God, they look awesome. It is wild to see artwork that I've made on an iPad on like a four foot by five foot tapestry. Like, it's awesome. It's, um, I also recently for all you, all you youngins in this group, I see you, you know, all of you, you know, <laughs> uh, it's, I, I got a TikTok. I finally, I bent in and I, I got a TikTok and started uploading and um, I, I'm sorry, I'm on TikTok as postpartum puss and so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, on TikTok, you're more than So, how did you come up with that name? Uh, <laughs> you can't make any more comments about short skirts if you're going to pull that. <laughs> uh, like, we're talking about art processes. It's literally, it's off the top of my head. And if I don't like it within five minutes, I'll throw it away. So, postpartum puss just came to my brain. I was like, I'm in. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check me out on TikTok. I got three videos. And if you don't want to get on TikTok, I totally understand. <laughs> so I recently made the leap and I signed up, but I just watch. So I will look for that. Because I'm still wading through the stupid I, dancing. I need to get to the good stuff. I rarely I don't you know, peruse TikTok. I'm using TikTok to admittedly, you know, skeeviously get a following to bring on to like Twitch or another platform. I'm trying to collect everyone on TikTok and throw them somewhere else in a session. So nice, nice. So essentially you're using a box with a sandwich and a stick, right? <laughs> Surely. <laughs> I'll bring my cat into a video, you know, every once in a while and get those views and then just throw them on over to Twitch. Perfect. All right. Um, Chet. Hi. Hi. <laughs> what are you up to? Where can people find you? Uh, well, Go since away. I work about 15 hours a day on databases, I'm not up to much. So this was kind of a struggle, but we got through it. Um, you can find me on Instagram under Chet Smith Art. And I do have a Facebook presence, but it's just for my concert photography. So I don't use it for art. Um, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I do have a website, but I'm hardly ever on it. Hardly ever updated, but it's also Chet Smith art. So keep it consistent. The photography is great. I looked through that. Thank you. Yeah. I, I'm a I, hobbyist photographer. I uh, did it for 10, 15 years, covering all the shows in Springfield. Kind of hit burnout level. And so, uh, yeah, 400,000 photos later, here I am. Nice. And some therapy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's nothing to shoot right now, so. It's a good uh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I mean, concert fight. He asked me to come out and shoot, and I'm like, I'm drawing now. I, I, I Come out and draw your picture if that's nice. <laughs> there's a box of crayons. All right. Nice, nice. <laughs> you see, Caitlin. Uh, yeah. Um, I am currently working on my webcomic, Moxie, which can be read over at moxiecomic.com. Uh, there's also a sign up for my monthly newsletter over there that you can see kind of like process shots and other art I'm working on throughout the month. I send that out at the end of the month. Um, I also have a portfolio website, CaitlinBlaine.com, and I am most active on Instagram at CaitlinBlaineArt. Uh, and then sometimes on Twitter, uh, Caitlin Blaine Seven. Uh, but if you go to my portfolio site, all my links are there too. So, Nate, uh, I got a, a library of links, I suppose. But I am Nate of Mammoth Press, uh, graphic design and illustration. There's a Mammoth Press LLC dot com. It's a kind of an anchor site website. I don't really update it too much. Most people contact me through the social media stuff. Um, I'm on. Um, on Facebook, Mammoth Press LLC. Uh, I got my list over here. Uh, Instagram uh, is Mammoth underscore Press underscore LLC. And then Twitter, Mammoth underscore Press. I'm pretty sure if you just put Mammoth Press in any of them, they'll, they'll pop up. <laughs> um, I am. I started a TikTok mostly for clips of the Twitch channel where that I um, 
I uh, I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the Mammoth Multicade that's behind me, the vintage like arcade and retro console um, arcade. And uh, I talk art and uh, uh, also on YouTube at uh, Mammoth Press on YouTube where I, I'm going to branch off with more art specific uh, content and also some um, Multicade content as well. Um, I think that's, uh, yeah. I think that wraps up everything. Oh, and then there's Mammoth. <laughs> Pot, uh, Potbelly Mammoth uh, is a comic series, a web comic series. It's uh, um, uh, potbellymammoth.com. Season or uh, volume two content is on uh, Patreon at patreon.com forward slash potbellymammoth. I do really like the opportunity to both wear the shirt and have the poster. And uh, that wasn't really like entirely planned. It's just that yeah. this, is actually, this is actually stream merch. This is actually the Twitch. Uh, this is actually the, I don't like team. being in a band and wearing your own shirt on stage. I brought that up. Hey, I brought that up. I'm just saying. Why wouldn't you? Because I, I was like, the rule was in a band, you don't wear your own shirt to your own show. But I was on stream and I said that. I was like, that's the rule. I could be breaking a rule. And everybody agreed. No, it's totally cool, man. In fact, hold on. You're not going to steal yeah, the underwear you are you? while I was sitting there. You go. <laughs> <laughs> because I am that pathetic. That's no. Uh, <laughs> but your sales will now skyrocket. Marketing. I hope so. Like, hey, buy my stuff. Come <laughs> <laughs> click that. Click my bells and buttons now. <laughs> All right, Daryl, what's new with you? What are you up to? And where can we find you? Uh, I actually did post art this month. I, I started posting a Ninja Turtle series of portraits that I started before COVID and then lost all creativity during 2020. Um, but I started <laughs> posting those at uh, on my Instagram, which is Erleben, E-H-R-E-L-E-B-E-N. Uh, but if you Google my name or Nights In Studios, you'll find me. There's not a lot of clanches in the world, so... Perfect. All right, Gary, your turn. Uh, Artistgarybedell.com. Uh, at Instagram, Facebook, same thing. You can go on my website and you can find my book, uh, One. You can download my book, uh, Thawed. It's 118 page art book, uh, five bucks. Uh, you can grab one for $10. Same thing with Graveyard Slaughter. Uh, you should also visit the website, www.graveyardslaughter.com. And huge shout out to Dave Stanfield, again, Over uh, Overlord Games, LLC, Escape the Dead, coming soon. Some of my fellow Clever Kaiju members down here have seen it. Um, they know what's up, so I can't wait till it's revealed. It was pretty good. It is pretty dope. It's okay. <laughs> You're fired. No joke. <laughs> I looked at it. I was like, I'd like to play the heck out of that game. <laughs> okay. Um, as for me, um, Playco Games. Um, if you want a fun, family-friendly game, go to PlacoGames.com. Um, we've got a goofy tea party game that Gary drew some art for the expansion. Um, all wow. ages. Fun, hilarious simple to learn. We have a dinosaur game that's a little more advanced for a little bit older kids. And then Civicus 13 and up, which is a civilization style game, plays in 30 minutes. Super quick. It even keeps my attention. I like it. And I don't play those games. I will not sit at a table for five hours. I don't have the attention span. But, um, and for Vision Con, um, I am on the marketing team, that's we have had one meeting for virtual Vision Con. We unfortunately did have to announce there's no live con. It is on the top of the Facebook page. If you want to see the video, I'm announcing that. There are dates for next year, though. We are super hopeful for next year again. But virtual Vision Con this year, we've had one meeting. We're having another meeting this weekend. Last year, we threw it together in just like a couple weeks. I don't know. Um, Zach pretty much did all the interviews live from his house, and we were all on Messenger just backing him up and trying to make things work. This year, we're going to try to be on site doing live stuff, um, maybe have a couple of different channels going. If anybody out there wants to, has an idea for a panel or a workshop or an interview or something, send them to VisionCon, email VisionCon at um, visioncon.com. Ooh. Is it org or net? 
I'm gonna type it real quick. I forget every time. I thought it was. Hey, Deanna, are those clever kaiju yeah. guys gonna be there too? <laughs> <laughs> kaiju guys, better. I'm still waiting to talk to you about that. The pin click will definitely be there. Maybe a drink and go if we can arrange it. We can do both of those things. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna need I, a ride home. I think we can do the whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, visioncon.net. We'll get you to all our social media pages, the YouTube page where there's all kinds of interviews, spotlight interviews, live interviews, more episodes of the pen click. First five, the sixth one will be on there this weekend. Um, and that will be the weekend of April 3rd through May 2nd. So shoot us your ideas, man. We want to make this awesome, but we are an all volunteer staff at VisionCon. So it's just us putting our time in because we love geeky stuff. <laughs> um, oh, a big thank you to those guys too, like to Division Con for letting us do this and put the show on on their site and, and trusting my crazy ass to do this. And Deanna trusted me, and you guys all trusted me too, suckers. But no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just excited. No, thank you. I really appreciate it. For real. Oh man, when you. When Zach said Carrie had this idea, and I'm like, I guess I, I guess I can do that. I guess I can sit and watch awesome art all day. I would love to do that. <laughs> well, there's almost ten of us each month, so statistically, one of us is bound to get it right at least a little bit by accident, or with our powers combined. Oh my gosh, you guys blow it out of the park. I do. I do want to give a shout out to Chad Thomas. You need to go. He's got his Kickstarter going on. You need to go get yourself one of these groovy hats. Spectral Void. Yeah, that's good <laughs> stuff. I got my hat coming. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think all we have to do now is sign off and say we will see you next month, March 25th, Thursday night, 8 p.m. Central Time. And Gary, do you want to tell them what we're doing? Next month is New Gods. So we're looking for suggestions for gods. It could be like the god of food, the god of gambling, the god of pants, the god of stereo <laughs> systems, the god, the god of, of sound. No, no, no. You make them cool. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not the god of pants, but you know, each of us are gonna uh, we're gonna pick the, the the ones that get the most votes, and then each of us will be doing a different god. So, or goddess. Or goddess, yes. Or goddess. Um, yeah, I say god. That's usually what I mean by god. It's like yeah, it's usually or, yeah. like I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that too. Uh, yeah, so we just want your suggestions um, and we will see what you guys come up with. I know Sign it's un I know it's unintentional, but it actually kind of works out cuz uh, American Gods is on stars if you're an Neil Gaiman nerd. Oh, and it's it the is. Old yeah. Gods versus New Gods. Oh. And so there's lots of nerd options or something original in there. Yeah. There you go. Um, the Facebook event for next month is not up yet because I got busy, but it will be up very soon. So watch for that. Click interested or click going just so Facebook reminds you. And that's where we'll be asking for those suggestions. So we will be seeing you soon. We won't <laughs> give it to you. Give it to us now or else. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> and tap that doesn't click. I'm on <laughs> Right. <laughs> That's because my arm is here and the mic is way over here, so I gotta go like this. Oh, I see. So I gotta use two pins. <laughs> right, well, that's it for tonight's pin click. Thanks, everybody, and we will see you soon. Bye. -bye. <laughs>